each for three. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> and happy Sunday morning to each and every one of you. Amen. We praise God for another opportunity to be in his house of praise and worship one more time. And we always, always welcome the Holy Spirit's presence in this place with us because we know that it is only through him that we're able to do anything. And that includes giving him praise and honor and glory uh, because he deserves that and so much more. I can't speak for you, but I am happy that he allowed me to live to see one more day. And I, that I even knew what my name was when I woke up this morning. You know, well, well <laughs> some people are like, did you know your name? I did know my name when I woke up this morning, and that is a blessing from God. And we should not take those little things for granted. So often we just get up and get moving, but don't you know there are some who right now do not even know who they are. They have no idea. They can't remember moment to moment. I'm not talking about the almost senior moments I have where I put things away, <laughs> never to find again until I'm no longer looking for them. But I'm talking about people with real memory issues, dementia, who have no idea who even their children are when they walk in the room. We have so much to be thankful for. And I just praise God for it on this morning. And let's move into our inspirational scripture. This morning's inspirational scripture comes from Jeremiah, the 29th chapter and the 11th verse. And it reads, for surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. Amen. Well, what a powerful scripture. And, and we need to walk away today, keeping it in our hearts and our minds that God does have a plan for us. And it is always a plan to prosper us. It is never his intention to cause us pain or to have us hurt. And I know sometimes in life we, we do suffer pain and we do hurt, but know that that is not God's plan for us. And that even in the midst of what we're going through, any hurt or pain that we may be feeling, he is still working out his plan for our lives. And, and his plan is for our welfare, our benefit, and not to ever harm us. And I just praise God for that. And because he has a plan for us, we have hope for the future. Amen. 
man. So even when times get hard, never ever lose sight of the fact that we have hope in the future because it's all a part of his plan. Oh man, that felt good to me. It's all a part of his plan. Mm. Oh, I'm going to let you go because we it's already first Sunday. We got communion coming, and so I'm going to let you go, but it's all a part of his plan. So let's just keep it in mind that God has plans. Amen. 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 Stand up with me and let us pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. As always, I pray that from the moment you walk through those doors or you tuned in to watch us this morning, that you knew that you were welcomed in this place. Amen. Welcome to church. We are so glad that you're here. And we want you to know that when you walk through our doors today, you didn't just walk into a building. You walked into a family. And regardless of who you are, where you came from, or what you look like, you are welcome here. Because at this church, we believe that God is love. And that he is in the business of rekindling lost passions, restoring broken dreams, and filling empty lives. At this church, we believe that life in Christ is not a formula of rules and laws, but a moment-by-moment -moment relationship with Jesus. And His love is infinite and everlasting, without pretense or conditions or discrimination. At this church, we can't stand religion, but we love God. And if you're not quite sure what the difference is yet, we can't wait to show you. We're glad you joined us today. Welcome to church. Amen. Welcome to church. We have a few announcements on this morning. First of all, uh, immediately following this morning's worship service, we're going to be meeting in the social hall to tear plastic. I know you all are saying, we got a crazy pastor. She get up and say almost anything. Yes, we're going to be tearing plastic. You all may be aware that we ordered new tables and chairs at the early part of this year. The tables and chairs, of course, are here. Uh, we have the chairs stacked up in the basement, ready to use. However, they are covered in plastic. And we just need some help getting the plastic off the chairs. So if anyone has like 30 minutes to just stay after church and help pull the plastic, we would greatly appreciate it. Um, it's, it's not that hard to do. It's just that the more of us that are able to help and participate, the better. So please keep that in mind. Uh, before you run out of the doors, go down and pull four or five chairs before you leave out and get that plastic off. Thank you. On tomorrow, Monday, at 6 o'clock p.m., we will have an administrative board meeting. It's a limited meeting. Uh, you all know that we will be getting together to take care of some particular business of the church. So please meet us at 6 o'clock on tomorrow, Monday. Uh, at 7 o'clock, we will have our deacon board meeting. This is our regular beginning of the month meeting for our deacons. So please plan to be with us tomorrow at 7 o'clock. If you want to come early, you can come early and pull plastic. I'm sure it'll still be some plastic to pull. And we appreciate all the help we can get. But deacon board meeting tomorrow, 7 o'clock p.m. 
on next Sunday, November 12th, 2023, it will be our annual Family and Friends Day. And we are encouraging everyone to invite their family and friends to come out and just serve God with us on Sunday to worship him and to honor him. We will have light refreshments after our regular morning service. We do still have Saturday praise and worship services every Saturday at 3 o'clock p.m. Feel free to come join me as we praise and worship in that service. Uh, that service is also uh, live streamed every week, so you're welcome to even watch it via live stream if you're unable to come and be with us in person. Uh, we are continuing to pray for church successes. So as we see them and note them, please pray and praise God for other churches as well as our own. Our AVAC gifts for the month of November is boxed dinners. Boxed dinners. So we would ask that you would give uh, boxed dinners over the course of this month. And as always, if you'd like to give the money, to make those purchases, I certainly have no problem running out and making those purchases uh, in your name. Uh, those of you that are at home, again, feel free to give through our electronic giving format and we will go and make those purchases for you. There is a giving category for ministry works. Here at First Baptist Church in Terenum, our goal is to just help one because I am convinced that if we focus on helping one, we'll end up helping many. Amen. 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 Please join us in the singing of a musical selection. Strange. 
Amen. Amen. It is now time for our responsive reading. This morning's responsive reading is number 671 in the back of your hymnals, number 671, Christ's Temptation. Number 671. Good morning. Good morning. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. It is now time for our offertory period. Uh, we would be passing, will be passing trays within our sanctuary. And so we ask that you would give as God has blessed you to give. Our prayer is, is that if you would like to give electronically, that you would take advantage of the ability to give that in that manner. For those of you that are at home, we welcome you to mail your gifts, uh, drop them off at the church, or take uh, advantage of our method of giving that is electronically, tithe.ly.com. This morning's offertory hymn, number 182, Five in your hymnals, number 185 in your hymnals. When I survey
Father, we thank you for the gifts and the givers. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, for even blessing us with the ability to give. Lord, we pray that indeed your word would bear fruit in our lives and that you would bless us as the givers that we are. Heavenly Father, that you would touch our lives in, in many, many different ways. And we promise, Lord, that we will absolutely give you all of the praise the honor, the glory, the recognition for the many, many blessings that occur in our lives. In your name, Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Amen. It is now time for our joys and concerns. Um, we are joyful that Jackie and Mark, which are uh, Shirley's children, that they made it safely to England. Uh, and that is something that we truly praise God for. Our prayer continues to go out for the entire family of Patricia Jones as they mourn the loss of Jackie's mother. Uh, so certainly continue to keep them in our prayers. They will be making a return visit to the United States in a matter of two or three weeks. So let's just keep them in prayer as they... Yeah, as they continue to handle uh, the business of her mother and prepare to return back home. And we are praying for Mildred Boston, an individual uh, in Detroit who has cancer. Uh, we are praying for uh, the Daniel family in the loss of our aunt. Uh, we are praying uh, for Judy's brother uh, who thus far treatment has gone well. Uh, we are praying for her nephew, Jim, as well, who stands in the need of prayer because of some medical challenges. We are continuing to pray for Gloria Palmer, uh, and we are praying a, a joy. Today is Terry Fox's birthday. We won't be singing to you today, Terry, but we know you faithfully watches, and so happy birthday. Uh, we are praying for Pastor Mark Clark. Uh, we are praying for any who may be traveling. There's multiple people that I'm aware of that are traveling currently, and certainly we continue to keep them in our prayers as well. Uh, we are praying for peace in this world, uh, whether it's the Middle East or Ukraine or in this country itself, we pray for peace. Uh, we have another joy. Uh, Lindsay's birthday is this week, and so we wish Lindsay, who's hiding out up in the IT booth, a happy birthday. I can only imagine what's on the wall behind me because they were, <laughs> they were fully prepared for the happy birthday to uh, Lindsay. So happy birthday up there, Lindsay. Um, and then I know that we have some others. I'll allow you to share uh, any other uh, joys and concerns that we have. Amen. We'll certainly keep Frank 
in our prayers as he is wrestling with that pooled muscle. If it caused him to be in the emergency room twice in one week, we certainly know that it's a serious pool. So we'll keep him in our prayers. Well, certainly we will keep Joreen and Bob in our prayers. I won't call them, so when you talk to them, say the pastor didn't call because if you got COVID, you don't want to talk. You just don't feel like it. But let them know that we're praying for them, and when I think they're at a place where they can talk, I'll give them a call, okay? Really? And are they still down? Mm. Okay, thank you. Oh, good, I'll keep talking. So <laughs> there is a, uh, the, the number of people with COVID is rising again. And so certainly we've been here and done this before. So you guys do what you need to do to stay protected and careful. I recognize that many of us have been vaccinated and revaccinated and revaccinated, uh, but we still can get COVID. So if you feel you need to take any additional safety measures, please feel free to do so. I got some good news. I'm, all this talk about wars, and I do want everybody to keep praying for peace in Jerusalem. But there's a revival going on in Nicaragua. There's 65,000 people involved uh, so far, and over 10,000 got saved, and God is healing people. There are people are walking out of their wheelchairs. Hmm. And the government got wind of it. And they're offering a, a, a place where 350,000 people can worship at one time. Oh, wow. And uh, there's also a uh, revival that broke out in uh, Gainesburg. I think it's in Florida. I'm not sure. And the joke today is these two women were best friends, and they were driving along, and their car broke, uh, was in a terrible accident. They both died, ended up in heaven. And St. Peter says, we have one rule up here. It's very tranquil, tranquil, and we have a lot of ducks around here. So don't step on a duck, because if you do, they make a heck of a racket, and it ruins the tranquility, and there will be repercussions. So they were pretty careful, and, but as time went by, one of them slipped, and she stepped on a duck. And immediately, St. Peter came and grabbed her by the arm, and he led her to this homeliest guy that you can imagine, and he chained her to this homely guy. So the other woman, she was very, very careful that she didn't step on a duck. But what, she was surprised when St. Peter came and grabbed her by the arm. And uh, he took her and he chained her to this most handsome guy she ever seen in her life. And under her breath, she says, wow, I wonder what I did to save this. And the man heard her and he says, I don't know what you did, lady, but I stepped on a duck. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Ron, for our comedy of the week. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, you've heard the many joys and concerns that have been offered before you. And we also recognize that you heard the unspokens that were in our hearts and on our minds and that we chose not to speak. And so right now, Heavenly Father, we pray that you would move in the way that only you can and that you would touch, that you would bring healing if that would be your will, that you would bring comfort because we know that that's your will, and that you would fill us all with more love one for the other. And then, Heavenly Father, we, we pray for all who may be sick or shut in, whether it's COVID or pulled muscles or cancer or, Lord, heart issues. We lift it all up before you. And we pray for those that are traveling, even as we speak, Lord, that you would be with them, 
that you would cover them as they go to and from. And Lord Jesus, we pray that your movement of faith would continue in such a magnificent way in this world and that that move would continue throughout the world and even throughout this country and that we would be able to go through a religious revival in you and that our faith would be deepened. Heavenly Father, our prayer right here and now, Lord, is that you would continue to bless First Baptist Church of Tarentum. Heavenly Father, continue to speak to us that we might be able to be a force to be reckoned with in this Tarentum community. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would use all of us in the way that you see fit to uplift and upbuild your kingdom. Give us a worthy heart, mind, and spirit uh, that we would indeed be willing to do whatever it is you have for us to do. And we lift you up and just praise you on today because you are such a good and gracious God. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Please join me in the singing of a musical selection. Every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you.
Amen. Amen. It is now time for this morning's sermonic message. Our sermonic message comes from Luke, the sixth chapter, and the 38th verse. That's Luke, the sixth chapter, and the 38th verse. And it reads, Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. Amen and amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, our prayer is that this word would go forward with the power that comes from you, that you would use me, Lord, to be a blessing, and that, Heavenly Father, this word would be a blessing to these people in the same way that it has already been a blessing unto me. Amen and amen. The subject of this morning's sermonic message, all we have to do is give. All we have to do is give. And one of the topics uh, often found in sermonic messages are those pertaining to our being blessed and, and how to obtain those blessings. Of course, our Bibles speak of so much more than how to obtain blessings. But for today, this indeed is our focus. And I am certain that we can all use a reminder. I know this because many, whether they're saved or unsaved, wonder why they don't have enough, however much that may be. Let's talk about enough for just a moment. How much is enough? Is enough when we have enough to pay for our daily necessities? Is enough when we have enough to pay our bills, which includes necessities and wants? Is enough when we have enough to pay our bills and save a particular percentage? Is enough when we have enough to make any purchases that we may want? Any, any purchases. Is that enough? I mentioned the concept of enough because unless we decide what is enough, we will never be satisfied. We will always feel that we need more. Hear me. This is not just a verbal exercise. This is something that we all must do. So please consider how much is enough. And this message touched me as well. And I'm giving deep consideration and prayer as to what is enough for me. Allow me to share this. I know that it's true for me, but my enough when I was in college is very different from my enough when I was a single mother is very different from my enough as a married person, is very different from my enough as a widow, which is likely very different from the enough of a retired person. The enough bar changes as we proceed through life. It's like every time we reach the enough bar, we often add to it so that enough is no longer enough. That's just the reality. For this reason, we need to regularly evaluate how much is enough. But the problem is that often the enough bar moves because our tastes become more expensive, or our lifestyles become more expensive, or our living conditions become more expensive. In other words, especially as Americans, we are consumers. We spend what we earn. And now I didn't say that we don't save because in essence, saving is also spending. It's the payment to self, so to speak. The amount we pay ourselves every pay period. But it's also our purchasing a more expensive vehicle because we have more money to pay the note. It's also our purchasing a new home because we have more money to pay the mortgage. It's also our taking grander vacations because we have more money to pay the expense. 
Now, as all of you know, I enjoy a good vacation just like the next person. And I'm not saying that that's wrong or sinful. And what I'm saying is that we need to determine how much is enough. Because our determination of enough affects our giving. And let me repeat that. Our determination of enough affects our giving. You see, people rarely give what they deem unable to give. And unfortunately, this applies to our giving of the tithe. And we don't talk about it, but God doesn't ask us for much. The one thing, however, that he does ask for is the tenth, 10% 10 of all our income. And that includes what we earn on the job. That includes what we're given as a bonus. That includes our Social Security or retirement income. That includes what we inherit. Yes, 10% of the gross, not the net. And we are also instructed to give offerings. And that's an amount over and above the 10%. It's very difficult to give when we don't think we have enough. And that's why today's text is so important. You see, although our Bibles teach many ways for us to be blessed, today's method consists of a simple, simple recipe. And if we get this one right, then we won't need to keep thinking about why we don't have what we think we need to survive. The simple recipe I'm referring to is based upon our trading. Yes, our trading. For instance, the trading of material for the reciprocal. That's where we'll begin. And we all have material things. That's the things that we own or possess and things that unfortunately we sometimes value above all. We would do nearly anything to keep and add to these material things. But if we're going to be blessed, we must learn the lessons of this text. Give, and it will be given to you. This is the law of reciprocity. If we give, it will be given to us. Basically, God is saying, if you do something nice for me, I'll do something nice for you. And it's an obligation. He made us a guarantee. So when we give, he is obligated to reciprocate. It makes me feel good to know this. All I have to do is give. Allow me to throw this in. The reciprocity agreement with God is why gambling is unacceptable. Because most often, often the reason we gamble is to win and win more than what we gave. It's as if we're in a reciprocal relationship with the Powerball machines. And we trust that reciprocal relationship more than we trust our reciprocal relationship with God. Instead of giving to something that's based on luck or chance, give to God. <laughs> There's a guarantee with that. And I always feel compelled to put out caveats when I make these types of statements. Maybe it's because I can hear people's spirits. And right here, I'm hearing a question about financial investments, stocks, bonds, and the like. Here's Brock's response to that. And making investments are fine as long as we don't put more trust in our investments than in God. And meaning our primary source of growth is through our giving to God. And this giving includes the giving of our material goods. These are the tangible things in our lives. Clothes, shoes, and yes, money. Keep in mind, things that are tangible are not only those things that can be grasped by our hands. It includes things that can be grasped with our minds. Yes, our thoughts, knowledge, understanding. So here we are to trade those things that we can grasp with our hands and our minds. Yes, trade them. Give one for another. Told you, it's just that simple. For this how to be blessed recipe, give.
That's all we have to do. Give and it will be given back. So let's begin by trading our material for the reciprocal. Now don't miss that when we trade our material for the reciprocal, we are giving our way into a blessing. When we find ourselves in need, give. And we'll talk about that more in just a moment. As we trade material for the reciprocal, please understand that we may not get the same thing that we traded. Our God is wise enough to bless us with what he knows we need when he knows that we need it. So keep trading. Don't stop. Don't be discouraged when the reciprocal is not what we expected because indeed God is true to his word and we must have faith. Faith that causes us to trade material for the exceptional. So we've traded material for the reciprocal because we know that when we give, we will get. But what will we get? That's a great question. In addition to the reciprocal, we receive the exceptional. Yes, those things that are great. Jesus describes the exceptional this way. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over will be put into your lap. For every giver in the room, we should be shouting for joy right here <laughs> because we know that we're in line to receive the exceptional. For those that struggle with giving, join us and become a giver. And believe me, God's word is true and he will never tell a lie. I can personally remember a moment in time when I was struggling financially. I didn't know how I would make it. And what I was earning just was not enough to cover my necessary bills. And after being born and raised in the church, I finally decided to take God at his word. I took the little that I had and I gave it. I put it in the church offering and I committed to paying the 10% tithe. I can't promise how it will happen for any of you that make the same decision, but I can tell of how it happened for me. I had a bill to which I owed a balance. The new bill came in the mail and it had a zero balance. Now, I know that I owed the bill. It was on my list and I was budgeting the little that I had so I could pay it. Remember, I was giving, but I was also trying to live right before God. So I called the company to correct the obvious mistake that was made. I know that sounds crazy, but it's my testimony today. And when I called the company, I explained that I owed a balance and that the bill I received was incorrect. The customer service representative looked at my account and assured me that I had a zero balance. Well, I stopped right there and hung up the phone. <laughs> and no more trying to convince them that I owed the bill. It was then and there that I acknowledged that I traded the material for the reciprocal and the material for the exceptional. <laughs> now, I give without question. And I encourage all of us to do the same. Just give it a try and watch what God does. And when we give, he will bless us with good measure. Yes, we will receive something of value and it will meet God's standard, not our standard, but God's standard. Please just think about it. A good measure pressed down. And yes, it will be packed in, pushed down so that the more we give, the more we will receive, and it will be more and more that can be put in. And please just think about it. A good measure pressed down, shaken together. And what we receive will be agitated like clothes in a washing machine. You know, when we put the clothes in, the machine appears to be full. But once the machine agitates the clothes, they settle. And we see that more actually could have fit in. Yes, our return will be shaken together. Please just think about it. 
a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, and we will receive so much that it pours out over our lives. And just imagine our exceptional blessings overflowing and covering our homes. Our exceptional blessings overflowing and covering our children. Our exceptional blessings overflowing and covering our families. Our exceptional blessings overflowing and covering our workplaces. Our exceptional blessings overflowing and covering our churches. Yes, running over. And as Jesus explained, that good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over will be put into your lap. And we know what a lap is today, but a lap during that time was akin to a pocket. It was a fold in their robes. And because it was on their garment, they were able to carry this good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over blessing with them wherever they went. It was theirs to keep. Because once God gives, it belongs to us to do with as we please. Again, how much is enough? What will we do with the trade received from God? My suggestion, give it again. And make giving a priority in our lives. Because no matter how much we give, God is going to give us even more. And Jesus said, for the measure you give will be the measure you get back. We give a little, we get a little. We give much, we get much. See, I told you, it's simple. All we have to do is give. And we receive so many blessings when we're givers. And I encourage us today to become the givers that God requires us to be. But for us to meet this requirement, we must trade material for the spiritual. Yes, I said it. <laughs> trade material for the spiritual. And we may be wondering, how in the world did she get to spiritual from this text? Well, please know there is spiritual in every scripture text. We just must open our eyes to see it. Here, the spiritual is found in the message in its entirety. Yes, the message. This message is about faith. <laughs> It may sound like it's a message about giving, but it's a message about faith. It takes faith to trust that we can trade material for the reciprocal. It takes faith to trust that we can trade material for the exceptional. And it continues to take faith to recognize that when we trade our material, we will be blessed beyond measure. The same faith that was mentioned earlier in this sermonic message and let me remind us, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Hebrews 11 and 1 gets it right. When we trade the material, we do so with the hope that God will bless us in return. And we have this hope, although we cannot see where the blessing is coming from. I had no idea that my bill would go to a zero balance. I just hoped in the fact that if I give, God would give it back. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, don't miss this today. Our giving is a sign of our faith, a sign of our belief, a sign of our trust. Yes, a sign of our spiritual selves. Hear this message from Jesus. Give and it will be given to you a good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over will be put into your lap for the measure you give will be the measure you get back. If we believe it, we should act upon it. Call God on the carpet. Hold him to the promises that he made. Give the 10% tithe. Give the offering over and above the tithe and watch God move. If we think we don't have enough, give anyway. Because this one thing is true. When we need something, know that all we need to do is give. Amen. 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 These messages about giving, and I don't preach them very often, 
<laughs> but I come up against any spirit of not preaching and or receiving these messages because I believe that any pastor who does not preach messages on giving does their membership a disservice. But let me tell you why. Because giving is a sure-fired way to be blessed. And so if the man or woman of God is afraid to tell people that you are blessed when you give, they are missing an opportunity to be blessed. Who does that? It's my job to make sure that you all know what God's word says. I'm not trying to get anything for me. You all that know, know that. I'm not trying to build up anything in particular for this church. You all know my heart and you know that. I am preaching a message on giving for you so that you can figure out what you need to do so that you will have enough. Oh, you better know. Oh, I'm, I'm going to let it go because, see, somebody don't believe it. You're lacking faith. You better know that this is all you need to do to be blessed. Give, and he'll give it back to you. He promised you that. Oh, my goodness. Okay, okay. So for those of you who don't know Jesus as Savior, Please know that you need to get to know him because he's the son of God. He died on the cross for us and he rose again from the dead. And he has all power in his hand, power to save us from any death that we may be otherwise facing. And so we need to just welcome you into the fold because all you need to do is believe it, and confess it, and you will be saved. My prayer is that if you have questions or you, you want to confess, that you would reach out to me, that I might be able to talk to you even more about Jesus and share with you First Baptist Church of Tarentum, who are people who truly, truly love others. And my prayer, my prayer is that you would not leave this service in an unsaved condition because you just don't have to. I praise God for all that he is doing in the lives of the saved and the unsaved. Amen. It is now time for us to move into our fellowship offering and then our communion. Those of you that have been around here know that on First Sundays, we do a fellowship offering. And please know that this offering is truly used to be a blessing to others. It is not an offering that's taken and put in into the church's general offering collection. These are monies that are earmarked to be a blessing to others, and we use it just for that. And I praise God for First Baptist Renum because this church is a giver. Woo! You better know, this church is a giver. And we bless others. We bless missions, and we bless many others in our giving. And so we offer for you during this fellowship offering period to give. Immediately following this offering, we will move into our communion service. Please join me in singing our final selection. i 
still stands Great is your faithfulness Faithfulness I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You never failed me sing your praise again Jesus you're still enough keep me within your love my heart will sing your praise again still stands great is your faithfulness faithfulness I'm still in your hands this is my confidence you never failed me yet time for us to share in the Baptist tradition our monthly family meal together. And as you all know, I love to have an opportunity to come together and eat with you. And I pray that you feel the same way as we share in a meal with one another. Just before Jesus headed to the cross, he had a a final meal with his friends. And it's been called the Lord's Supper. And it was a time when he pulled the 12 together. And he did quite a few different things during that meal. He served them. He washed their feet. He taught them what it means to be a lowly servant. But he also said some really important things to them as he passed around that meal. I mean, first, he talked about his body. So allow us to pray over the body of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your son, and we thank you for the sacrifice he gave for us, and we thank you for his body, for the fact that he suffered 
and died for us. And we just pray right now, Lord, that you would cause us to, that we would never forget what you did for us. Amen and amen. On the very same night that he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread and he blessed it and then he broke it and then he passed it to his disciples. And then he said to them, this bread represents my body, which has been broken for you, my God. And he said, as often as you eat this bread and drink of this cup, do it in remembrance of me. Amen. In remembrance of him. Take and eat. But in addition to the body, there was also the blood. And his blood was shed for the remission, for the forgiveness of our sins that we might be able to say, I'm sorry when we get it wrong. Oh, how thankful we are for the blood of Jesus. And let us pray. Lord, <laughs> we thank you for having the wisdom to send Jesus to shed blood in our place. <laughs> that we no longer have to carry cattle and birds and, and, and the, the like to a temple to sacrifice to get in right standing with you. That the ultimate sacrifice has already been given. Oh, thank you and thank you. Lord Jesus, ah, and we know that it was a rough time. And we know that the beatings were painful. And we know that the nailing of your hands and your feet was excruciating. We know the piercing in your side. Oh, we know you suffered and you bled and you died. And we promise we'll never forget what you've done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. In the same manner after they had supped, he took the wine and he shared it with the disciples and he said to them, this wine represents the new covenant of my blood. Hmm. Oh, thank you, Lord, for the new covenant. And he said, as often as you drink of this cup, do so in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. Take and drink. As often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we do show forth the Lord's resurrection until he comes again. Amen. And amen. Please stand. We're going to go home. First of all, let me say God answers prayers because the Steelers won on national television and so did the Lions. So we praise God for that. Now, we haven't done this in a very long time, and I know I just talked about COVID being on the rise again. If you are comfortable, let's make a circle as much as we can and hold hands that we might be able to sing our dismissal. Let me get a let me get a look from everybody. Y'all want to get in y'all want to touch each other. I can't tell. This side want to touch. Do this side want to touch? Sure. Okay, let's try it. Let's do what we can. I know I'm not going to be on camera, so it's it's okay if you can't get us Let's get as close as we can. So that means we got to come this way. Come this way so that we're in the center. My hands are cold. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's been, it's been a long time since we've done this, and I miss it. I miss it. Amen. Uh -oh. Amen. Craig? Blessed be the time that binds our hearts 
in Christian love, the fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above. Now you go out into this world that has been turned upside down, <laughs> and do your part to turn it right side up. Amen? Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name, sing like never. slow 